<laughs> oh, this is gonna be good. <laughs> Welcome to my show called The Wind Down. It's about hanging out with people that I love, respect, and admire. We talk about life, love, sex, because I know they speak the truth, and I know they keep it real. Any vices that you would like to tell everybody about? Look, I'm on Pinterest. <laughs> <laughs> what happened when you got shot? I was in shock, I was just moving. What kind of love are you? You ain't gonna believe this shit. <laughs> I'm gonna pour myself a glass of wine, and maybe you should too, because it's time to wind down. Thank you, thank you, thank no, you, no. thank you. I appreciate you coming to sit down doing? with me at the wind down. Huh? We're gonna get it's right into wine. it. No, it's a wine. We don't want. Oh, it's right. Oh, yes, fifty dollars for me. Come on. <laughs> this is only what people like can just chill out and like. They're gonna all wanna come because of it. Thank you so much for coming to hang out with me. <laughs> <laughs> so I know you don't do a lot of sit downs. This means a lot. Yeah, this show is <laughs> gonna be big because there's no one who won't accept the offer when they know it's you. I love that. I love that you have so much confidence in me and. Uh, I'm, I'm, I have confidence in me, too, now. <laughs> so um, I want to tell the world how I see you. I see you confident, genius, super intelligent, amazing man. You are an amazing man. And we look up to you so much. I mean, you've done what every rapper, you know, what <laughs> every right. rapper want to do with you. Transition, yeah. You transition very well, and it's amazing. How do you... I'm just saying, like, like, how do you do that? <laughs> like, I always find something new to go, to kind of go after. So, like, while music was working and everybody is, like, I can hear this the, the other artists' musical choices and say, oh, it's cool. Like, if they call me for a remix, I can write and be a part of the song. Mm -hmm. So it was a cool that. Like, like right. it could be something so far out of the box that I'm like, I'd be interested in it. So you get in where you fit in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> I love that because that's exactly what I do. I, I don't chase. I don't force. Just wherever I belong is, is where I go, wherever I'm celebrated. And... Yeah. I think it's a demographic of people that it's a certain, like when music, when my music hit, like in 03, it's the new thing in, in hip hop culture at that point. And then I think the, the kids that are in college at that point, they couldn't have their social experience without me playing in the background. Yeah. So I look at them like they're my core audience, and they're older now. <laughs> we can go upside the head with a bottle of... <laughs> that was the line. Dre loves him. We all, we all celebrating him. I mean, and then the album came. Oh. <sighs> Get Richard Die trying. Crazy. That same audience, that same crew that was in college at that point, they grown now. And their kids are in the nightclub. So they don't want to be the same place their kids are. And then that's why I looked at television, so I could tap into the same audience again. And this is how I knew with Monet why I would be super excited. <laughs> because you... Well, let's talk about that, because you picked me. Now, I just got a ton of... All right, then. Let's eat. Yeah, I know. She's <laughs> like, because I look and going, Mary's audience is there. Because you're one of my stars. Like, you are someone that looked at the television and was like, yo, like, the music, it was dope. It had the melodies that R&B music had, but it was still us. It was still hip. It was still hood. It still had that energy to it that mm. the guys excited at the same time. Specifically, you and Meth, both of y'all are, are my stars. Because this is where everyone who saw you guys in, in that experience, like I saw you, can see you again. See, that's genius. <laughs> that what you just said, everyone, and we're thinking, Watch and then it. with a whole nother agenda, with a whole nother thing for us that we can't even see for ourselves. I mean, we're actors, but we can't see this. And it just went so organically. Yeah, it's seen and, it, and it's not like, you know, the Mudbound. I watched your performance in that and was bugging off of that because it was like, <laughs> yo. I never saw, I would never think, <laughs> expect that for you. And I was like, yeah, this is crazy. Like, I'm like, from that performance, I knew that there was no limits to what you could do performance wise. And I'm going, yo, <laughs> we gotta get her. To but do, I did, to but do. I did see it though. <laughs> this is why I'm here. Yeah. I only do real. Right. I can't do that, you know, we pretending because power was like, there you go. Tommy. You know the people, yeah. They, they're there, you know, so that was like, I was stuck from the beginning, and, mm -hmm. and, and so was, you know, the culture, like, we, we all stuck. That's what attracted them to it. And yeah. it, like, the hip-hop, they love the, the, the soap opera. That that thing, that fight, that gossip, and thing that, that happens, that it, it creates the conversations in the barbershops and the beauty salons. 
But you, you know, you, you strike a nerve and then they react and then boom. And you did. Success. And there's yeah. so many guys that lived that journey that when they got to the height of what financially of everybody in that environment that they was in, they feel like they're on top of everything. And then there's no old folks home for that period. The drug trade was such a big trade. Yeah, so it's the story of our lives. It's all we knew, you know, living in the projects and everything. I always felt like this, this is not right. Mm. I always felt like that, like uncomfortable, like this can't be it. We're not supposed to be living like this. I always felt like I was supposed to have some money. Something. Yeah. This building five, third, it's not it. third floor <laughs> apartment with these two bedrooms and these 50,000 people living in, this is not it. Yeah. I didn't know where I was supposed to be, but I wasn't supposed to be there. Right. Did you ever feel like that growing up as you know, young I, I found I had financial comfort when my mom was around at all. But when when she passed, my grandmother showed a, additional attention to me because when she looked at me, she see my mom's face on top of mine. It was the only one of my mm -hmm. nine children that died. So she would look at me and then then she go come in, right? You know, like and. As far as finance is concerned, there was no money because it was nine kids. Yeah. Like, and then I had already came from the comforts of my mom hustling and having those things. And then the only people that I see have nice things were people from my mom's life. So they had Bondvilles and Regals and Cadillacs and stuff. And you look and you're going, they look at you and say, damn, boy, you're young. Why your clothes look so old? I'm like, oh, man. They look out for me, but in a different way. Like, they give me, hey, you know what that is? You know what to do with it? I said, all right, anybody, anybody bother you, tell them I gave it to you. And there's some guys that were big enough in the neighborhood for them not to whoop me for selling it, you know? So yeah. <clears throat> it kind of got me started early. I was, like, hustling since I was, like, 12. So you believe in um, if you see it, you can be it. Yeah. And that's why we're here, because we saw it. Absolutely. You know, like, my mom had three jobs, like, a yeah, nurse day, working at the hospital with something else, yeah. And we was living in, you know, it was a lot of cousins and a, really kind of no money, but she made sure we ate and we had, you know, oh, like, this is just I got to get me some furs, I got to get me some Nikes, and I got And my sister used, was going out with this huge, this big drug dealer, so she would come home with raccoons down oh, here, stables and all types of shit. So I was like, all right, I have to figure this out. <laughs> And so I saw it, yeah. Benzes, houses, and I wanted it. Mm -hmm. And knowing that we weren't supposed to be there and that vision, something, something had to happen. Right. I, you know what I'm saying? Something had to happen. Because these right. things were part of your identity. Like when people yeah. saw you, they'd look at the, the clothes you had on and then how you got there. That's the highlights. We forget about the good moments. We still laughed, we still had fun when right. we didn't have it. Like, you know what I mean? But you still figured out how to have a good time not having it. When I got older, I figured out how to hustle. I figured out how to, you know, get me a wardrobe from High Energy on 123rd Street, yeah. how to go get me some braids, how to go get what I needed, you know? It was hard, you right. know? Yeah. I was a babysitter sure. for a lot of drug dealers. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, thank you very much, I'll take I'll that. I'll do it, make sure the baby's all right. <laughs> You know, it's interesting, like, just not coming from not having like that, me, I don't, I believe depression is a luxury. Tough situations, like, still look at it like I got to get up and do what I got to do regardlessly. I can't not do what I got to do. So mm -hmm. I'll, I'll work depressed. Or oh, when, I'm, when I'm feeling those feelings, I say I just don't feel good, but I still do everything mm -hmm. I'm supposed to do for the day. And, and it's like, because when you're hustling, Mary, you go, you mean to tell me you didn't sell the pack because <laughs> you was depressed? <laughs> Give me my pack back. You know, <laughs> now you can't even get no money. You can't nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like, that just is not acceptable in the, in the early stages. So you look and you go, if you felt those feelings and you felt like you was depressed for whatever reasons, you still got up and did what you... You are. Look, anybody who have a long enough career has peaks and valleys, you know? And then with the upsides and the downsides, you, you just work through it. Like you, specifically you, when you go, every time you in, in a position where you feel like it's going down, it's only for it to go back up again. I, mm -hmm. I watched it happen repeatedly. It goes, goes, it goes down, then it goes up higher than it was the last time it was up. Mm -hmm. Every single time. 
Yeah, I mean, listen, that's life. Yeah. That's life is hard as hell. But I know when I come out the other side of that hell, we're going to celebrate. Yeah. I'm going to celebrate because I was in hell. Yeah. My valleys be like, <laughs> <laughs> So I'm trying to keep them from not waking up on time for, right. for a job and mm -hmm. not having the character I need mm -hmm. to do what I need to do to keep me from being broke or keep, right. you know what I mean? Yeah. So now, after all the stuff that I went through and put people through, I had to go back when I got myself together and apologize to people in the music industry, right. in, in the, the circles that was working right. my music, and say, um, I, I apologize. Um, thank you for even caring. Because when that low hit mm -hmm. and there was nothing, this was in the 90s, right. like, nobody was paying attention to me. So now it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm a different person and I'm all about character building and mm -hmm. building myself up to be a better, so I can have an opportunity like you have given. Can we get into social media a little bit? Look, I don't care what everyone thinks about me. If I did, I would be a mess. Me and my whole family have been shot at, mm -hmm. but not shot. What happened when you got shot? I was in shock, like just moving. What kind of love are you? You ain't gonna believe this shit. <laughs> You are destined to be where you are because you have been through something really heavy. Like, I've been, you, me and my whole family have been shot at, mm -hmm. but not sh When you were there and you were coming through it and, and it happened, I mean, how did that prep you for today and what happened uh -huh. when you got shot? When I got shot, I didn't really know the details of it at that point. It was just, just happening to me. Yeah. And I was in shock, like, just moving. I'm responding to the sound of the gun. When we think we're going to do something, you're not going to do that when it just goes off. And, that, like, there is, your reaction to the sound itself is there first. But what happens is either you're over the process, either your fear consumes you or you start to toughen up a little bit. And I, being central on a corner that was in the middle of the neighborhood where premium was running the neighborhood. So it was like, that don't work. You know what I mean? And then yeah. the music, they stopped answering the telephone at Columbia Records at the time. So I had to figure out how to do it without their support in any way. So I had went to write for Puff because uh, Jennifer, when she was recording on the six, I was in the studio with her all the time because her executive producer was yeah. my executive producer. So we was always around each other in the very beginning of her career. So she was telling Puff that he's talented. That at that point, I had to convince the bootleggers that it was worth stealing, uh -huh. so they could produce it. I, mean, I had to put that? the fake barcode, <laughs> put the fake barcode on the tape. I put the Columbia Records logo, all of that, and. And then put them out where, when they got their hands on them and started to duplicate it for me, that's when I felt like we started to get something moving. So at that point, what's a nightmare for an established artist is a dream for a new guy. Because mm -hmm. they were stealing it, duplicating it, selling mm -hmm. it all over the city. And it was the only way you could hear my music. And it got so far that it, it kind of got to him at the point. And, and, no <laughs> At that point, you had to earn the ability to, for the music business to feel like you're next. You're going to be next, like the, the a &R department. The respect. Yeah. Yeah. And I had earned them believing that I was a talented artist, but they didn't want everything that came with me. The drama and all that stuff behind it, they was afraid of that. Let's get into <laughs> Get Richard Dodge Ryan. Yeah. He's 20, he be 20 years old. Right. When was the last time you listened to that album? I listen to Get Rich or Die Trying before I go on the tour. Right before I go on the tour, I go back to play and listen to the whole records. Mm -hmm. like, but all of the, the albums, so I can kind of try to sequence the, the show. So when I go back... I wanted for that record to be a success, man. Right? When it did, I couldn't ask for it to be more successful than that. I know saw a hip-hop artist sell 10 million albums outside of Eminem or Eyes on Me, but it was a double CD and it sold 5 million pieces. The Tupac record. And he died to do that. He had to die in the process. You know what I mean? Yeah. So when people say it, it physically sold that many copies, and I'm like, what? That's all I asked for. But what I learned about myself since then is if you ask me to make one wish, I'm just going to ask for more wishes. 
Because I'm gonna want something else after that. Well, it's just something else after that. Once I, when I get a hit, I, I get nervous. I'll be like, ugh, okay. Because we can end up chasing and have the same 10 same sound. Songs. But I never did that, so none of my records sound the same. Right. You've been relevant longer than I've been relevant. And that's because you're able to come with another one. Even when I was younger, I didn't want to do anything that anybody else was doing. I right. still don't want to do anything. I just hate that. No, I don't want you to dress like me. I don't want you to smell like me. I don't want to. <laughs> I just, that's just how I've been still that way to this day. Right. And I, I think I, I, I can be like that. That's why everybody's comfortable with you with that. You being the queen of, of what hip hop and R&B is. I think your TV and film, like that's your, this, this is your, these are your new verses. Organic, like, you know? this is how you killing the up and coming. Now, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because they come in, they come in and try to do. Because so, film and television, they never even seen anybody from music to it on television. Yeah, and feature films, so we got Ice Cube, we got Will Smith, the, all these guys that had success in music before they got involved into film. And then now television, it's better. Like some, some stories have legs on them that can go longer and experience and, and it need to be on television instead of smashing it into a feature. In the past, television has been a lower grade of cinematography than feature films, but that doesn't exist anymore. You know, now we can make things that are all the way up to quality and... All this violence in hip hop right now. It's a, it's a lot. Because the music is so close to the street, Mary, that the street ends up in the music. And like they they start to write about what's happening as far as like the, the drill music is is concerned. Like gang culture wasn't as big when I came because I we come from hustlers. I come from people. Get the the financial part of living better is connected to all of the street, all their motivation. Like when you get the gang stuff, it's more uh, they honor violence. They honor right. the guy who does more damage. So I'm gonna get a clearer perspective on them because they come to me. Like they've been listening to the music, Mary. So like they'll come and they'll talk. And they, 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 wow. It's a lot wilder than. I, I get it, but I think that once you're where you are, you have to be selective with your environment now. Yeah, yeah. And you and you have to be selective with who you hang out with because you're no longer that. And right now people are just killing you just to say they did it. This it's yeah. crazy. People are just getting shot just sitting in restaurants, rappers. Like I think the conversation I would have you, you gotta, gotta be, be careful. Conscious of it. Also like that's a hundred, that's two be three, four hundred thousand dollars <laughs> worth of shit on them. Like so even if you went in the bank. <laughs> so when they walk around with that stuff on it does make the best or the lo most lucrative robbery would be from the artists that are walking around that don't know not to wear that all the time. And social media doesn't help me. Yeah. Now, that, that hurts them more because people that don't have it, could you imagine if they showed us everybody having it when we felt like that? When we felt like it wasn't right, this is not right because I just don't feel like I'm supposed to be like this. I got to find a way to do better than this. And... All we do is look at everybody have it all day come through the feed. It's great, yeah. Yeah, it, it kind of makes people feel like there's not much. I just, yeah, I do it. <laughs> How much you gonna get me to do it? <laughs> like, it'll I make hear you, down, yeah, I hear you. It's just... Down to be more extreme. Because some people look at it like you came to remind them how much you have. The other way is to remind them how much they don't have. So they're angry with you for having it. When we were younger, mm -hmm. We knew better. All right. So I still, I still know better. Yeah, like, yeah, I'm yeah. just not, I'm not going back there because I already know. Yeah, like, it's no reason. Um, you're very super active on social media. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and it's fun for you. I do have fun, though. <laughs> I see. <it's, laughs> you, oof. when you go, you go. Ever? Not really. Like, some of the stuff, I don't think I, like, I'm, Re restraining myself from saying things at points. Because I got to... Restraining? <laughs> look, I don't care what everyone thinks about me, Mary. I look... If I did, I would be a mess. You that, know what I'm saying? That like, part, yeah. And you look and you say, you think I care about that, mm -hmm. but I really don't care. And wait till your mother say what I said about you. Because when I can hold on <laughs> to the success that I've had and the things that make me feel good, if you haven't had that success, what do you hold on to when I say it back to you? Oof. Is anything off limits? No. 
I'm, I'm, <laughs> that's whatever they say. Look, I'm, I know nothing's off limits. I've seen. It's crazy with the thing they said to me, and then I'll say something bad. I go to their page and do it. So I'm talking specifically <laughs> to the person. Yeah, you, you bum. <laughs> you got to change it now. So you've been Mr. Healthy Lifestyle forever. Yeah. You still... Yeah, I mean, you look good. Just, I mean, you slimmed yeah, down. Sure. Any vices, like, th that you would like to tell everybody about? I'm, look, I'm on Pinterest. <laughs> you ain't gonna believe this shit. <laughs> I like to look for ideas and then put it in the house, the thing. I had to tear the wall down two, three times, changing the wall to do it a different way. <laughs> and I wouldn't do it like this, because I feel like the space that you, you do pick should be the flyest space. <laughs> What happened? You didn't even say cut, man. You just rushed in like, <laughs> that shit 50 talking about. Let me get my get hair out. Get the hair out the way. Oh, shit. Don't kill me. <laughs> you ain't gonna kill me. Let's move on to love. What kind of love are you? Look, when, when I'm into the area, yeah, I'm into it. I, I can do everything. I got you. When I'm in it. So, yeah. ah. <laughs> Did I just growl, right? She said, ah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going crazy. You know what I mean. No, <laughs> Let's move on to love. Um, I don't even know, man. Like, you know, look, look at this, look. You know what I think love is? You know, I think if I describe love is, it's when I'm in a friendship with, with a woman and I'm finding a gratification out of seeing her happy. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, my God. At that point, I think I'm in love with her. Oh. Yeah, because even if her friends or her people are there and they're doing their thing, but I'm happy because I know she's really happy at that point. You know what I'm saying? It's not necessarily coming from me, but that's how I interpret what is love involved. Man, that's really nice. I mean, we're all the guys like you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's have some fun. Yeah. So for 10. <laughs> hey. I'm phenomenal. Look, look, no, look, see, that was an interesting question to ask me. We got to ask other people and do a general census of this. But the, uh, I, look, when, when I'm into the area, I'm into it. I, I, can, I can do everything. I got you. I, 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 try I, to I do totally everything. understand that answer. Like, if, if I'm not even thinking about it every day, all day, it's nothing. But when I'm in it, so, yeah. ah, got it, got you. Yeah, because I don't really see limitations to what I do to kind of express it at, at that point. Right. <laughs> did I just growl? I did, right? Just, ah, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm going crazy. You know what I mean. No, like, exactly. <laughs> Do you think you'll ever... Tim Valleys, if we ask the smartest guys we know where they took their biggest losses, they'll start thinking about business endeavors and stuff. I mean, talk to my tops of Fortune 500 companies, right? And in Forbes, there's a column that clearly says this is married and divorced. And that's where they shifted that that process is such a painful process that that's the biggest loss and then it takes time for us to figure it out but the most expensive thing we really spend is time oh. the time put into the relationship and that energy that's over that time period i love that the most expensive thing we really do spend is time, time. oh my god <laughs> you learned about yourself in relationships well, that, i realized how important friendship is Oh. It's the strongest form of a relationship to me. I think when we'll have people in our lives that are friends a lot longer than people that we pick to be significant others. Because a lot of times people don't sort themselves out, so you don't know what's sufficient for you in a relationship. So if you said, where's my concept of a relationship coming from, right? If it's coming from our parents or things like that, then it's coming from tradition. We live in non-traditional times. That shouldn't work. If it's coming from the images of relationships we've seen in cinematography, then some of the, at least, let's let it be both our ideas who are working to us, that, that we understand clearly what those ideas are. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you're saying that this is what I expect out of my relationship at, at this point, mm. just so you know, then, then you can meet at the point that someone is sufficient for it, like this actually being able to live up to it, then we, develop what we want as we go. So, with that being said, describe your perfect mate. Like, who would complete well, 50 Cent? I think they just, they gotta have their own ideas, the things that, that they want to do on their own. And then I kind of got to compromise for them while they compromise for me. We 
just be one thing. There's always a sacrifice, pit man. You see the woman that'll be like, I gave up everything to support you to do this. And then, okay, what do I owe you for those for doing that? The same thing from the male perspective, because I would rather us just work when we were free to be together and be together and, and be excited to be together because we miss each other. Yeah, that sounds perfect. That Like, that's really perfect. Yeah. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> like, good luck. Not been taking good luck. luck. <laughs> I'm my grandmother's baby. I used to paint her toes, sit there and paint. Have a great balance as a man. You're, you're vulnerable and you're strong. It always gives me something to work towards. <laughs> Um, I believe that everything that we've been through in our life is preparation for where we are right now. Right. So, your challenges, how did it prep you, like, you know, from your street smarts and how you do business, how did that prep you for all of that? Well, I like to use my, I have to use my instincts, all right? So, I have to know enough. And sometimes you can just, I get a read on them. Like, you can identify whether they're givers or they're takers. So you can mm -hmm. see if they're fueled by what they can get out of it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And just identifying with that tells you how you need to gauge or how you watch that person. I get defensive when the person is trying to, look, when the woman's asking me for things, then I'm like, oh, you think I'm a sucker? <laughs> oh. When she comes and she's just cool and then, because <laughs> organically, I'll, I'll want to do those things. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then you, you, I'll start to do the things and it'd be cool because she ain't never asked me for nothing. Nah, she cool. She never asked me for, for nothing. But Even if she doesn't ask you, you can read the energy. Right. Like she's coming. Then she came with those intentions. Right. That intent. And then, look, I believe when a woman's around me, she's a reflection of me, right? Because she's reflecting my choice to be around her. So. Mm -hmm. When she looked good, I wanted to look good. It's just she's looking good for me at that point. I want to ask you a question. Um, how'd you get like that? Like the way you see women and the way you handle and and and, and the way you're answering these questions, just just the type of man you are is different from a lot of men. Yeah, they, yeah. Like you really care about the woman because you want her to do what she wants to do. Right. Well, how'd you get like that? I got well. I guess, like, really, I'm, I'm my grandmother's baby. They can't see it because, I, like, I do the 50 cent thing. But in the house the entire time, I was my grandmother's baby. Even my, my oldest, our relationship, I understand it because his his mother's baby. He's mm -hmm. exactly who I was with my grandmother. But my grandmother, like, I, I used to sit, I used to paint her toes, sit there and paint her toes in the actual room. My grandfather would go, Get the, let the boy go outside and play with everybody. <laughs> You have a great balance as a man. You're, you're vulnerable and you're strong, like a man's supposed to be. That's a great balance. That's rare in today's day. And the pain of my mother's toenails, that's beautiful. That's mm -hmm. my mother. So what is the biggest misconception about you? The, oh, that I have bad intentions. Like, in the environment that I grew up in, once you're a victim, you were a victim consistently. Like, it was repeated, a mm -hmm. repeated thing. So. I don't allow myself to f to fall victim to people, or at least to look like I I, I mind it, because I'm taking the L when mm -hmm. I'm getting hit. So the best bet is for people, to, someone to learn something from you instead of yeah, trying to we repeat go. with you. And we look, look, I'll look, I'll take the, the whoever's in my field is performing at the top level, and I'll compete with that. Okay, I'm gonna make one bigger than that one. Watch. Now I'm gonna figure out how I can position something where it performs higher than that. Like it always gives me something to work towards. But if you don't, if you're already at the top of things, you can become complacent. If you create, if you see someone that's ahead of you a little bit in that, in that area, then you say, "Watch, I'm gonna catch him." And you say, "He's doing this. They gave him these awards, different things, and say, I'm gonna watch what happens." Or I'm gonna have a show that performs as well, even if they don't give me the awards. The the public will know, and it will feel mm -hmm. like I've accomplished the same. Amount, you know what I mean? Because when you look at the numbers, I, number one, two, three, and four top shows in African American homes right now. So big, you know. And now, you know, with my company Blue Butterfly, I, I 
I pray and hope that we do what they you're doing and, and, and they, then some. They're more excited when they see you involved. The first thing they say when you sell a television project is they're looking for strong female characters. When you have that strong female person on, this is how we sold the show to ABC. But it was easier to sell with you involved with it. Like, nobody else is going to come bring us a show, and they both uh, Grammy Award winning, and we got that Emmy together. Yes! Come on. <laughs> you got your Emmy? Yeah. I got, I got to get screw, I, I got to screw yeah, the thing in. Yeah, did you get your thing yet? <laughs> yeah, I got it. They just sent it to me. <laughs> they gave us the trophy. It was blank on the bottom. I was like, you know me. I'm, 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 they trying to check oh, us. Trying to play me. <laughs> trying to play me. You want to give me the trophy? You know, I was thinking it? <laughs> And I did start thinking it to this week, actually. And then it was like, yeah, what happened? <laughs> and it just came in the mail. <laughs> I just got it. Uh -huh. You too mature now. Come on. I'm yeah. going up, Mary. Like, Every answer you give is just mind blowing. You proud of being a dad? Yeah. Like right now, he thinks I'm a superhero. So. In what ways do you still need to grow as a man? Well, I just had to pay attention to when I decided to. This is to hear you speak, and every answer you give is just mind blowing because it's so unreal. It's rare. And it's different. I'm yeah. growing up, Mary. Like if you look and you say, when when I would jump out and be aggressive, I would, I didn't pick people. I think you're a punk if you're picking the person that you have a battle with or you have a fight with, right? I think whoever come, anybody is sufficient. This is why I had beef with three guys that's in jail for life. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't pick those guys. These are not the guys you pick. You, you get yeah. killed in the process. Like, this, their backgrounds say you, you don't make it, right? And yeah. I had those altercations because I don't pick who and I don't care. If that's the problem, you say we have a problem, I say no problem. In this situation, this, and it's going, maybe it's my temperament, I look at it later. I say, maybe it's mm -hmm. me. They keep getting me into these situations with these guys because I look, they have ideas, I have ideas. The idea didn't work. My idea did. And that's why I like it, because my idea worked. <laughs> <laughs> I love but your they, soap check. Yeah, but you I look at it and say, maybe you got to watch when you when you start being aggressive. Or, or they say, what is the goal? What do, what do I get out of that? Yeah. It, it just doesn't make yeah. sense to get into those scenarios. Like, the people come to you and they got anger, and it, it's really coming from somewhere else. Like, the, their road rage is putting your middle finger up back at them, because if you do, they may be already at the edge, and they're going to crash, and you just cause them to crash into you when they would have crashed into something else. Mm, yeah. You know? Yeah. And when I look at it like that, I go, let me just control when I'm aggressive about things. And then when I do do it, it's calculated. So now I mean it when I'm doing it. I understand. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm just going to say this. Um, I know I would be proud of you if I was your grandmother and your mother. How do you think they would feel about the man you've become? I think my grandmother would be proud of me. She, you know, she really didn't know everything. She would look like if she hears some of the stuff from outside, she'd go, this just bothers me. They come here, they knock on my door and talk to me about my baby. We don't tell me the stories about my baby before. I know he didn't do that. <laughs> Kurt didn't do nothing like that. <laughs> and I told me the house and I did all that shit. Like, that is just, she just didn't see. Okay. She just never saw me that way. Like, you know what I mean? And the, in those scenarios, the, the mom, she never sees her baby as what he did. She sees him as the baby that she gave birth to and that, and that she raised. Yeah, especially boys. Yeah, because she don't <laughs> see him that way. She's like, that's my Mother, baby. Mothers it? love the boys. Girl, most proud of for yourself. Look, my relationship with Saya is great. My youngest son, I'm proud of that. I, I love that baby. He's my guy. That's he thinks I'm a superhero, man. I took him on tour. He was looking up at the thing. Because it's the first time he's seen me in a live performance. And he was like, oh, shoot. He come back, he goes, so that's what you was doing when you say you got to go to work? <laughs> OK. So he was like, you know Travis Scott? I said, yeah, yeah, I know him. He said, but you could, like, you could talk to him? Like, you know him? Like, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know. He goes, Dad, all right. That's really when I sell the deal, Earl. So. You proud of being a dad? Yeah. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. This has been amazing. Amazing. Like I said, you are just so beautiful. 
so beautiful. Just this is what, before we wrap up. Let me. That's what I want to tell you. Love you. Respect you to the highest. Thank you for just being so genius and always remembering us. Mm -hmm. You know, we need you. And um, thank you for coming on the wind down. Love you. That's all I say. Thanks love you. Love you. Me. Love you. Respect you. Appreciate you. Big hand for fifty cent, everybody. Yes. Thank you. Oh, this is going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my show called The Wind Down. It's about hanging out with people that I love, respect, and admire. We talk about life, love, sex, because I know they speak the truth, and I know they keep it real. Any vices that you would like to tell everybody about? Look, I'm on Pinterest. <laughs> <laughs> what happened when you got shot? I was in shock. I was just moving. What kind of love are you? You ain't gonna believe this shit. <laughs> I'm gonna pour myself a glass of wine, and maybe you should too, because it's time to wind down. Thank you, thank you, thank no, you, no. thank you. I appreciate you coming to sit down doing? with me at the wind down. Huh? We're gonna get right into it. No, that's the wine. We're the wine. Oh, it's right. Oh, yes. $50 drink for me. Come on. <laughs> this is only with people I can just chill out and like. They're going to all want to come because of it. Thank you so much for coming to hang out with me. <laughs> <laughs> so I know you don't do a lot of sit downs. This means a lot. Yeah, this show's yeah. going to be big. Because there's no one who won't accept the offer when they know it's you. I love that. I love that you have so much confidence in me. And uh, I'm, I'm, I have confidence in me too now. <laughs> so. Um, I want to tell the world how I see you. I see you confident, genius, super intelligent, amazing man. You are an amazing man. And we look up to you so much. I mean, you've done what every rapper, you know, or every <laughs> rapper want to do what you do. Yeah. You transition very well, and it's amazing. How do you, I'm just saying, like, like how do you do that? Like, I always find something new to go, to kind of go after. So like, while music was working and everybody's, like I can hear this, the, the other artists' musical choices and say, oh, it's cool. Like, if they called me for a remix, I could write and be a part of the song. Mm -hmm. So it was a cool that, like, like right. it could be something so far out of the box that I'm like, I'd be interested in it. So you get in where you fit in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> I love that, because that's exactly what I do. I, I don't chase, I don't force. Just wherever I belong is, is where I go, wherever I'm celebrated. And... Yeah, I think it's a demographic of people that it's a certain, like when music, when my music hit, like in 03, it's the new thing in, in hip hop culture at that point. And then I think the, the kids that are in college at that point, they couldn't have their social experience without me playing in the background. Yeah. So I look at them like they're my core audience and they're older now. We go upside the head with a bottle of... <laughs> that was the line. Dre loves him. We all we all celebrate him. I mean, and then the album came. Oh, get rich or die trying. Crazy. That same audience, that same crew that was in college at that point, they grown now. And their kids are in the nightclub. So they don't want to be the same place their kids are. And then that's why I looked at television so I could tap into the same audience again. And this is how I knew with Monet why I would be super excited. Because you... Well, let's talk about that, because you picked me. Now, I just got a ton of bread. All right, then. Let's eat. Yeah, I know. <laughs> She's like, because I look and going, Mary's audience is there. Because you're one of my stars. Like, you are someone that looked at the television and was like, yo, like, the music, it was dope. It had the melodies that R&B music had, but it was still us. It was still hip. It was still hood. It still had that energy to it that mm. the guys excited at the same time. Specifically, you and Meth, both of y'all are, are my stars. Because this is where everyone who saw you guys in, in that experience, like I saw you, can see you again. See, that's genius. <laughs> that what you just said, everyone, and we're thinking, Watch and then it. with a whole nother agenda, with a whole nother thing for us that we can't even see for ourselves. I mean, we're actors, but we can't see this. And it just went so organically. Yeah, it's seems. And, it, and it's not like, look, you know, the Mudbound. I watched your performance in that and was bugging off of that because it was like, <laughs> yo. I never saw, I would never think, <laughs> expect that for you. And I was like, yeah, this is crazy. Like, I'm like, from that performance, I knew that there was no limits 
to what you could do performance-wise. And I'm going, yo, <laughs> we got to get her. To but do, I did, to but do. I did see it, though. <laughs> this is why I'm here. Yeah. I only do real. Right. I can't do that, you know, we pretending, because power was like... There shit. you go. Tommy. You know the people, yeah. They're, they're there, you know, so that was like, I was stuck from the beginning, and, yeah. and, and so was, you know, the culture, like, we, we're all stuck. That's what attracted them to it. And then, yeah. like, the hip-hop, they love the, the, the soap opera. That, that thing, that fight, that gossip, and thing that, that happens, that it, it creates the conversations in the barbershops and the beauty salons. But you, you know, you, you strike a nerve, and then they react, and boom, boom. And you did. Success. And then yeah. so many guys that lived that journey that when they got to the height of what financially of everybody in that environment that they was in, they feel like they're on top of everything. And then there's no old folks home for that period. The drug trade was such a big trade. Yeah, so it's the story of our lives. It's all we knew, you know, living in the projects and everything. I always felt like this, this is not right. Mm. I've always felt like that, like uncomfortable, like this can't be it. We're not supposed to be living like this. I always felt like I was supposed to have some money. Something. This building five, third, it's not it. third floor <laughs> apartment with these two bedrooms and these 50,000 people living in, this is not it. Yeah. I didn't know where I was supposed to be, but I wasn't supposed to be there. Right. Did you ever feel like that growing up as you know, young? I, I found I had financial comfort when my mom was around at all. But when, when she passed, my grandmother showed her additional attention to me because when she looked at me, she see my mom's face on top of mine's. It was the only one of our nine mm-hmm. children that died. So she'd look at me and then, then she'd go, come in. Right, you know, like, and as far as finance is concerned, there was no money because it was nine kids. Yeah. Like, and then I had already came from the comforts of my mom hustling and having those things. And then the only people that I see have nice things were people from my mom's life. So they had Bondvilles and Regals, and Cadillacs and stuff, and you look and you're going, they look at you and say, damn, boy, you're young. Why your clothes look so old? I'm like, oh, man. 